to run with for our afternoon. Hi guys, um, I'm excited to welcome up next a uh, couple of people who have come to be my friends. Um, many of you already know both of them, and I've walked around, and many of you certainly know one of them, probably even better than I do, but I had the pleasure of meeting both of these guys at our statewide conference back in February, and while I was helping to coordinate the logistics of their presentation primarily, um, I didn't get to interact with them much in the dialogue. And as soon as they arrived in Colorado, I was instantly sort of drawn to them and we really developed a strong bond. And um, I'm excited to introduce Micah Fialka Feldman and his compadre, Alex. Um, Alex lives in Las Vegas and he's the AmeriCorps Vista supervisor, project supervisor, um, for the Nevada Center of e on Excellence in Disabilities, which is Nevada's NSED. And um, he's also a former classmate and a great friend of Micah. And Micah has recently graduated from college, um, a co Rochester, no, oh man, which college? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oakland. Oakland University, everybody already knew and I didn't even know, someone else would probably know this, but Mike recently graduated from the Options Program at Oakland University in Michigan, and um, I'm just really excited for you to hear their story and also hopefully to hear some new things that you may not have heard before. So please welcome Micah and Alex. Thank you. I think you're all turned on. <laughs> so one more time for Bronwyn and everybody else uh, behind this conference. It's going wonderfully. Out. Hey. Oh well, that's just one important feature of this. Then. <laughs> All right. Bronwyn didn't eat any breakfast, so her brain is still waking up. I have some sugar. <sighs> there we go. Thank you for having me come and speak in Utah. Uh, here's what I'll be talking about on my life in school and in the, and in the community. Doors that I have opened for myself and others. Uh, my life um, through my journey. And what and and what and what and and like what and 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 like what uh, 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 community means to me. Here's, here is a, a little bit uh, uh, about me. Uh, uh, I have a great family. We like to travel, and and I live uh, in the uh, state of Michigan. And I'm Alex. I went to college with Michael, like was said in the introduction. And I've actually been uh, presenting with Micah at a variety of different conferences. And today, we're doing something new. This is the first time we're going to do the slideshow presentation and then open it up to question and answers for a kind of intimate, candid conversation with the two of us and Bronwyn. So you're in for a, for a treat today. And we're going to get to see another side of, of Micah today as well through this presentation. Here's some of my uh, games I use on the computer. Uh, have, I uh, have a program called Giant Speak that if you send me an email, I could respond of, uh, of like speaking into the computer and then it will, uh, it will like uh, print it on the screen. And then I send like emails and then I have a program called Screen Reader that if someone sent me an email, I could have the um, person read it uh, to me on my screen. And uh, here's my, uh, 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 I like love. Uh, I like love politics, and my sister calls me a calls me a, a political junkie. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I uh, did a internship in two thousand three with my uh, uh, state rep. And then uh, I like voted for the first time in two thousand and two, uh, and I was uh, I was uh, uh, happy to vote. My parents threw me a uh, party for the first time I voted. And then here's me as uh, Bill uh, Clinton for Halloween. <laughs> I think Mike is cooler. 
<laughs> then here's the first I uh, uh, opened. In uh, in like uh, in like uh, for in like going to school, I uh, used to go into the door with all the special clades, and then I told my parents I want to go in the same door as my friends, and that and that saw me being with my peers and stuff. And that's the first door I opened. And then here's my circle of friends between uh, third grade and twelfth grade. Uh, we uh, played basketball. Kids uh, like food. We uh, ate uh, lots of food. <laughs> uh, played cards. Uh, in like high school, I used to hang around with the teachers, and my friends said I had to dance with five girls, and, and I uh, did that. <laughs> and then uh, in our uh, in, uh, uh, IEPs, I, uh, I started going in uh, fifth grade to my IEPs, and it's a plan of action, and I had my teachers plan and help me with my dreams, and, and I had friends that came to the meetings and helped me, uh, help me, help me, help me with my dreams and stuff. And then I and then I used PowerPoint to share what I what I wanted at school. And then what I told my teachers, uh, things had to be sent over uh, email, uh, ask questions on my computer. Uh, I am like learning uh, how how to read and um, better. I I like took a uh, reading class at Oakland for like three years, and I am uh, I am uh, reading much better. And then uh, I have a program called Dragon Speak that I speak into that I shared. And then here's a uh, <clears throat> here's a uh, link program that that started my sophomore year that kids got half half credit to help me. And then uh, here's one of my friends that was one of my links uh, link uh, students that uh, that uh, I taught him about science and he taught me about teaching. And then we are still friends. We uh, I like went to his wedding and we talk on the phone. And then uh, uh, you you can see him in the film. That if if like you get the uh, you can share that if you want. I think that and if you hand out all of your stickers and you get to win a prize, one of the prizes is going to be Mike's film. So hand out your stickers. <laughs> and here's some of the groups. Um, uh, here's. Like in high school, I did a class. I uh, had to. Um, most friends wrote a paper, and I did it on a videotape. I asked some of my parents' friends what they thought of the Vietnam War, and I turned it into a film. Then ninth grade, I joined the uh, cross country team and ran uh, one block. <laughs> <laughs> and I practiced, practiced. And then by my senior year, I ran two miles in 23, 23 minutes, and I got my varsity letter. And then I, I like I didn't really run through the door. <laughs> <laughs> and then in homecoming, I had a big smile because I was with uh, pretty young two girls. <laughs> and then um, in like prom, we. Uh, had a fake uh, fireplace in, in, in like, in, in, in like, uh, in like, in like a limo. And then here's some of the groups I'm a part of. Uh, kids are self, uh, uh, kids is a group across the country, and it's a great um, group, and it's a branch of uh, branch of family, family like family like uh, voices, and it's a. It's like a national board, and and uh, I'm uh, happy that uh, I'm serving on the board. And then, uh, can we uh, please uh, read it uh, out loud? So we'll read this together. We are disabled and proud. Youth leaders from across the country, speaking out on our own behalf, supporting each other, changing systems to include us, providing information to other young leaders. And then uh, you can check out our website and find things to help uh, help students or any kinds of stuff in your state or 
and it's www.fv and and uh, that's all on my brochure that's on the on like the region 5 website and then here's a uh, here's the uh, here's the uh, here's the uh, disability Pride parade in Chicago 2004 I went to the first one and then this on um, July on July 24th is the 10th or 12th one and it's in July it's in July, and you are all welcome to come to uh, to like to like Chicago, and it's fun and and it's cool. Mm -hmm. And then here's a group of National Youth Leadership Network, and uh, it's a uh, group of across across like the uh, country, and we have teleconference calls twice every month about schools and about how how to get people to know about uh, how to get uh, uh, things be better in school and stuff. And then here's a quote that I learned at a conference I was at. Uh, <laughs> thing that brought me without me is saying when people have meetings, I should be at them too. And then here's two people you should know about. How many people know uh, <laughs> Zapax? How many know Justin Dot? Oh, wow. <laughs> he was the founder of the uh, a ADA, and uh, and and now how many people know him? <laughs> and leaders, uh, these leaders are open doors. And then here's my dream to uh, go to college. Uh, after after uh, after lots of long after lots of long meetings. I was enrolled in the program through the college, and then I, I like, I like, I still have an IEP, and and like uh, our state, uh, we, we I can get help until uh, 26, like uh, most states end at 21, but our state because after I think a long time ago after the law was passed, some people made our state go to 26, I think, or something like that. And then uh, here's some of the classes that I have um, taken. Uh, I took uh, a uh, U.S. history class, a group class, and social change class. And I have peer tutors that help me in the class. And I like how it works is I go to the teacher and ask her or him if I can like say a couple words about me. And most times I uh, 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 find uh, the uh, find like tutors that help me with like the homework and stuff. And then uh, I like talk to my teachers before the semester. And we most times I do all the homework as any other student, and I take like the uh, uh, same. I take like the same like I take like the same like uh, test and stuff. And then here's some of the student groups I I was a part of a Jewish group on campus. Uh, I I was a part of uh, Alpha Phi Omega, and I help uh, Saint Jude. It's a group to help. People that are sick in in St. Jude, and uh, I like uh, used to go to the Rex and at my school, but I don't go anymore. <laughs> and then here's my film that uh, maybe you can win, and and I can always see it on my uh, uh, on my like uh, uh, homepage of my website. It's for sale, so you can buy it. <laughs> <laughs> then here's my door that I have uh, 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 opened. Um, to go to the dome. Uh, it wasn't easy, but it was worth it at the end. October 2007, I applied to l live in the dome on campus. Um, my housing application was uh, was was like um, yes for it. And then um, I had a move-in date of January 6, 2008. And, and, then, and then the college changed their mind because they said, uh, uh, I was not a student. Uh, I like I like uh, I like I met with the vice president all on my own. Probably probably most of my friends at college never never like knew who the vice president was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I like told her that I paid full tuition, and I took a twelve lower down classes of credit, and my housing application was accepted, and she didn't call me a student. And then uh, I I went to the board of 
board of board of uh, board of uh, trustees, and I tried to tell them that uh, I, I like uh, was a, a student, in, and and then they they like they like I still didn't call me a student, and then and then like uh, I got uh, friends to help me get uh, get get like uh, three hundred letters from friends and and like uh, across the country and and city uh, and 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 I got uh, and I got one thousand uh, uh, sign um, sign like notes to be sent to the vice president and the board and then I was in the uh, newspaper and and like the and and on like and on like the radio shows and and then you can see that video on on my on like my uh, on on like my website. And then, you want to share some things of that? In 2008, we, uh, a lot of us went down to the uh, board meeting, uh, the board of trustees, and about tons and tons of people came. There, there wasn't even enough room in the, the room for people to stand. They had to have an overflow room outside. It was the most, I think the, the student vice president, body pre president spoke, and they said it was the most amount of students rallying behind any cause that they had seen while they had been attending school. And um, that's political causes. That was amidst uh, tuition being increased. So this was a real amazing appearance for Micah. Uh, look these people came out to see him. And I, I came out from Nevada, and they said they'd give me like five minutes to speak, and we got three. So uh, I, I, I still got my words out there, though, so that was good. But it was amazing to see all these people rallying behind a cause, and it showed that people really did enjoy having uh, Mike on campus and really believed in inclusion and saw that there were benefits for having somebody uh, with, uh, with a disability on campus, and that this was very beneficial. And part of the college community, Oakland University, would not have been the same without him, and that's what all of these people were saying, essentially. And then uh, they uh, started on calling a student. And then, uh, and then like, uh, a couple, couple of weeks after, um, Michigan Protection and Advocacy took the case on. It took two years and a three, three hearings and a five-hour, five-hour, uh, five-hour uh, deposition. I hope that you don't have to go through ever. <laughs> <laughs> I like, um, like, and it's first time ever that they they like videotaped it, and then they had the vice president who was on their side sit like, uh, sit, sit like, uh, sit like right across from me to like uh, try to scare me or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then on December 23rd, I, Judge Dugan, who's the judge that um, um, took the case and uh, ordered the college to allow uh, me to live in the dorm, and he, he like uh, understood that I was a student. And, uh, and then uh, I was on the NPR and Facebook and across like the, uh, across, like, the uh, country. In fact, CNN on December 30th of 2009 named Micah the second most interesting person of the day. I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know who the first person was, but <laughs> maybe he's living in a dorm too. <laughs> <laughs> and then on, on uh, January 4th, I, um, I like, uh, moved in to the dorm and it was cool. And then you can watch that clip on my uh, uh, on my like uh, website, and then uh, most things don't change. Uh, uh, I, like sometimes I thought of giving up, but most things w uh, don't change uh, on most days. And we we can uh, read this out loud together if we want. We have a right to dream big. We have a right to belong. We have a responsibility to support each other. We must tell our stories and be proud. As hey, I tell him said, if you're tired, keep going. And then uh, ask for help. Most things don't change alone. And uh, work together. And uh, and uh, on like on like April nineteenth, I graduated from the program with one uh, one like a uh, uh, one like uh, uh, other student. I was proud to do that. And then I had a big party on May second.
with uh, my friends. And then here's, uh, here's what, uh, after I graduated, I made a slide to, uh, I'm hoping that I can go around and speak more and to school staff and across the country now, just send me emails and I'll, be ha I'll check my calendar and, and uh, <laughs> I'm like, uh, ha and like happy to come around and, and like talk more because I have more time now and and uh, what door, what door, uh, what door, uh, what door are you want to open? Please uh, send me an email or or you can check my website out and please read this out loud. A community that excludes even one of its members is no community yeah. at all. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go into portion two of the uh, program, but before that I want to read something that Bob Williams wrote about Micah moving into the dorm. Anyone know who Bob Williams is in the room? Yeah, he was uh, in 93 appointed by President Clinton uh, to be the Commissioner for the Administration on Developmental Disabilities, the ADA, and uh, the agency within the Department of Health and Services, Human Services. So this was written on his blog after he heard and saw Micah move into the dorm. In 1997, I was watching Walter Cronkite. I heard that the San Francisco sit-in succeeded in forcing Carter and Califano to enforce Section 504, though that I knew my life and that of the nation would change for the better. A rush of pride, tears, and joy swept over me on that day. Those same feelings of absolute certainty and hope have enveloped me three other times since then. First, the day Senator Tom Harkin dedicated the final passage of the ADA to children with disabilities born on that day. Second, the day Mandela freed all of his fellow South Africans, regardless of the hue of their bodies, from the crushing bondage of the apartheid. And, most recently, when Micah Fialka Feldman, a 25-year-old student with an intellectual disability, won the right to live in a dorm at Michigan's Oakland University, where he is taking classes. Some pretty strong, wonderful words. First of all, first of all, I think we should all sort of move up here together. Mike, That's not off the hook yet. No sitting down. And um, so we, you know, prepared some questions that. Um, in our interactions and getting to know Micah better sort of were poignant for us. But before we get there, or as we go, I'd like for you, know, you all to feel free to ask questions. Do any of you have questions that you'd like to, to pose right now? All right, see, we thought at first you guys were shy, and I was thinking it was true, but here we go. Brave souls. Micah, at what age did you learn to become such a great South Africate, and was it a sl slow process as you learned to communicate? Um, you talked about being able to go into the front door of your school. Did you start there? I mean, you're such a strong advocate with such good l language skills now, and have done so many wonderful things. How did that journey happen for you? Uh, hmm. Uh, I think it started early on with you uh, wanting to go in the same door. Yeah, yeah. I, I like kind of like uh, wanted to go in the same door as my friends, and that kind of started me knowing like what I like, what I, what I like, what I, what I, what I like, what I, what I like, I wanted and stuff. And you were really inspired to be an advocate for change yeah. in society in general. I was yeah. a big fan of Martin Luther King. Right? Yeah. Like Hi, Micah. Hi. I was just wondering if you remember how old you were when you first uh, started working with the dragon, naturally speaking, and how long did that take you to kind of train it to yeah, um, your ways? Um, like the first time. The first time it took like four hours, and then now it only takes like ten to like twenty minutes to train my voice. Um, I have a question for you. 
question for you guys. Um, how did you two sort of become friends? And building off your friendship, how do you guys, what advice do you think you guys have for us in terms of how authentic and organic relationships and friendships are possible? Well, it started uh, in a different way than uh, usual friendships start. Micah had, at Oakland University, had posted flyers around the university asking for somebody who might be willing to be a support staff for Micah to be involved in recreational activities uh, around campus and in the community. And I, I saw the flyer and I, I was kind of drawn to it. I didn't know exactly how to interpret the flyer. I had seen Micah on campus before, but I, w I was kind of confused by it. So I called the number and, and talked briefly to Micah and thought, well, this might be a a possibility of a way for me to learn about something new and maybe help somebody out. And initially this was support staff. So you'd fill out, if you'd go hang out with, or hang out with Micah, you would fill out a certain form and then you'd get uh, a certain amount of money. Uh, Micah always says he, he, he was my boss then. So <laughs> he kept me in line, made sure I had the correct amount of hours. And, but what I found out is through this flyer, I was able to be involved in a lot of different experiences that I, I would not have been able to you know, be involved in if I hadn't had this flyer here. And I remember Micah early on talking about how he was uh, really into politics and wanted to go to a lot of political events. And at first I thought, oh boy, I hope he's on the same side of the spectrum as I am. <laughs> you know, we, we'll have to work that out. It'll be interesting if he isn't. But, but in fact, he was. And it was invigorating for me because I had met somebody who I really related to and I had a lot in, uh, in a lot of similarities with Micah. I realized initially that we viewed the, same, the world the same way. We were about the same things. We, we wanted to fight for the same changes in society and we liked doing the, uh, a lot of similar things when we hung out. And that kind of evolved from being a employee boss uh, relationship to begin with to a friendship and then to one that is now uh, probably one of the best friendships that I have. I see Micah once a month even though we're on the other side of the country from each other. I'm in Nevada, he's in Michigan, but we come and do presentations. I always make, if, if I'm back in Michigan, we're always uh, getting together, hanging out. Micah calls all the time. We're always in contact. <laughs> and it's turned into, uh, Micah's one of my best friends, my, possibly my best friend. Uh, so it evolved from being a, a created environment to one that was completely organic and natural. And the only reason that happened was because that experience was allowed. Are, are anyone familiar with Best Buddies? Mm -hmm. So Best Buddies has a, a saying that says, uh, Best Buddies goal is to put Best Buddies out of business. And that's the aim is that right now uh, some of these some of these in interactions and experiences are facilitated through outside uh, arenas, but the goal and eventual progression of society will lead for this to just happen completely naturally. But the, the thing that I learned from this, which changed my way of thinking about how we engage people in experiences, is making sure that that experience is offered. And that if we don't allow for interaction to happen, then inclusion really isn't happening. You have to be in a place where you can allow for these experiences to occur, and then the inclusion happens naturally. It isn't something that's mandated, it's something more that forms on its own. And uh, you have a lot of friendships that are like that, right? Um, all around the country. Yeah. So uh, you have Oliver in Chicago, and uh, Andrew in Chicago. Well. Yeah. And so we have we, all of these uh, friendships that have grown through Micah being on the, universe, uh, on the university campus is something that, like I said, wouldn't have happened without inclusion and only happens when there's that experience. I always say that I graduated college with three degrees, a communication degree, a philosophy degree, and a Micah Fialco Feldman degree. <laughs> and that's because I wouldn't, this, this friendship has gone so far that he's kind of inspired me to choose a career path that goes in this direction, and now I'm in a, a different state doing administrative work in the same field that Micah's doing. Uh, only because of Micah, uh, and that that friendship and that relationship has uh, facilitated for a lot of growth there, and that's possible once you open yourself up to it.
Michael, was it hard for you to uh, release the power of being Alex's boss at all? No. no. I, I think he still is, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm, the, I'm kind of the, the sidekick. I'm like Ed McMahon up here. He's, Johnny. He's the star. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think we had a question over here, too. Well, you, um, have you always had a lot of courage? I mean, even in elementary saying, I want to go through the same door, it takes a lot of courage and heart and hard work to stick with things because it's it's hard yeah it takes a long time so we are we are so proud of you and all of our children benefit from your hard work so thank you mm -hmm. and, and mike what is it that you think keeps you going uh friends and and notes and and talking to people on the phone and stuff it's all through this connection i always say micah is the most popular person on campus at Oakland University. Now there's going to have to be a new person now that you graduated, <laughs> but uh, someone's going to have to fill that seat. But it, he's like a field guide to Oakland University. If you want to know who this person is, you just have to ask Micah, and uh, he'll know who that person is. How did your parents feel when you, they said that you're not a student? Uh, they were kind of surprised that the school and no, and and like and like all this time, Oakland Oakland University was great. Like they started a great program, and then and then and and like the and like and like the policy was like they had a policy that um that they kind of probably made up their sleeve or something. But um <laughs> <laughs> but um but um but, uh, but uh, there's a policy that they say that uh, it was. Because I wasn't going towards a degree, and and um, th that's why I couldn't live in the dorm, and and um, and like and and like a couple of days after I won, like the like the uh, school is t the like the school took it to the uh, sixth circuit court now, and I'm waiting for a hearing in Cincinnati, Cincinnati, and then if it goes there after that, it goes to the, like the Supreme Court or something maybe. But you did get to stay in the dorm yeah. when your last semester. So the idea was that since Micah was in the options program and was not actually seeking a degree, that he wasn't a student. And that the definition of student was linked to a degree seeking status. Now for you, that was different, right? Yeah. What, what's a student to you? A, a person that does homework and goes to class. <laughs> <laughs> And also participates on other uh, student events. You're you, you're a huge fan of the basketball yeah. team, and always involved in all these different organizations. A lot more than many other students. Like we're a commuter campus. Oakland University has a lot of people who drive to school, and those people, you know, sit in their cars, go to school, <laughs> and then go sit in their cars and go talk to people. But Micah does the opposite. Everything that you can be at, you're at. So. enrolled in classes, you would ask if you could talk to the class for a minute? So yeah. Will you pretend we're your class, your first sure. day here in English or whatever? <laughs> Tell me what you would say to your class. I would just say that um, um, I'm just trying to find a picture that would help me with my notes, so uh, read, like a, uh, read like a test to me, uh, and, and it, uh, it like can be like 20 minutes or like 10 minutes after class or before class to just meet and talk uh, and just um, tell me what like the tell me what like the tell me what like the teacher said or stuff like that. And you also meet with your teacher. You would meet with the teacher before you do yeah. the class. Right? Yeah. So um, how did you first start? I don't know how many of you talked to Micah about his summer schedule at all, but I think you're certainly away more than you're home, and um, <laughs> you're very much on the national uh, speaking circuit. How did you first begin giving speeches? Uh, I uh, I started going down to Wayne State. It's a college down in Michigan uh, with my mom that taught some taught some uh, classes down at Wayne. And my circle of friends would come down there, and we would talk. And then and then I would uh, I like spoke at, at like uh, uh, at our, like uh, at our, like uh, at our, like uh, state board of ed. And I would like share my story there, and that that kind of got me started of going around and uh, talking at at like uh, 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 at like uh, things like uh, that and stuff. And now you've been around to 
uh, tons of different conferences, yeah. other universities, uh, all different clubs and, and whatnot. But what was your favorite presentation that you were at? Here. <laughs> <laughs> And, and how did you uh, decide to give Alex the great honor of, of being able to be a part of what you're doing and the advocacy work you're involved in? Um, because I, I like uh, I like thought because he like does uh, similar work in Las Vegas. I thought he and I could go around and, and uh, uh, go around and uh, go around and go around and uh, travel a lot and stuff. When I, the first presentation, I, went, I hadn't seen Micah's presentation, and uh, you asked me if I wanted to go to Baltimore to go to yeah. present. And this, I, I wasn't involved in the disability community at all, and uh, I just you know, flew out there with him. Didn't know anything about what the presentation was going to be, and before I know it, I'm in front of uh, 25 women, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> this is an interesting location, and then he's giving his presentation, and I'm off to the side. And, and we had worked a little bit that if you had wanted me to give any reminders or something that I would do that on the side because I was a communication major. And he said, uh, uh, the, the student, during his presentation, the students in their IEP, and he said, Micah, you need to say what the IEP is. What does that stand for? And he said, no, no, everybody knows that. <laughs> and I said, I, I don't think so. And I, I explained what it was and it kind of looked like a buffoon because I don't know what the IEP is. It's like saying, what does the US stand for? You know? <laughs> yeah. So. But from there, Micah, whenever I'd go to a presentation with Micah, he would, what I really liked about this and kept me on my toes was I would be off to the side and Micah would um, all of a sudden decide, okay, Alex is going to talk about this. And then I'd be thrown into having to you know, talk about something. Okay, let's, let's talk about whatever this, is, this um, thing is. And he, we, we did that more and more and then we started to uh, organize things a bit more and say, okay, well, I'll come in here. And uh, in Colorado, we had a lot of fun kind of doing a, a banter back and forth. And I really like how it's able to show, and he does that with, uh, Micah, some of your other friends go along with you, like Amanda and, yeah. and a few others. And, and the, the interaction on stage, I think, is really organic. And I like that <clears throat> we're able to do this, this sort of presentation. Uh, but every, every time that we prepare for a presentation, uh, Micah has something wise and insightful to say. We, we were just talking about what we're going to say today, and Micah told me something that I didn't even know before, some, some new insight in his, in his life. So it's always a learning experience. And, and now that I'm in the field, I can come by and you know, have a little bit of legitimacy behind what I say from a, and, and not have to define IEPs for everybody. So <laughs> I take it for granted. I, I understand you know what that means, so I won't explain. Sorry, Micah, this is kind of personal. Do you have a girlfriend? No, not yet. Not yet? No, I, I don't have time and now. I'm, I'm traveling. <laughs> <laughs> Micah, I know that your family has been really involved uh, with supporting you. Could you tell us some of the most helpful things that your family has done to help support you on your journey? Yeah, um, they have come to lots of my like uh, lots of like my uh, school things, and they help me like uh, um, tell my like t tell like my school what I uh, wanted and needed, and they have been like a great like uh, like a like a great like like a great like family and stuff. Thank you. And the, the dorm fight was uh, I remember your dad talking about this was one of the fights that Micah decided to take on his own. It was your idea, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you wanted to, you wanted to take the reins on that. And, uh, that was, you kind of learned from them. Yeah. So, um, you know, initially you were not going to be in, uh, included with your friends. And you decided that you wanted to make sure you went through the same door as them, which paved the way to helping you be involved and included in yeah. your education and in the IEP process. Um, what skills and, and kind of confidence did you gain through being included and being a part of, of you know, classrooms with your friends? Uh, I, I just liked, uh, I just liked uh, learning about what uh, they like learned in the class and, and I liked this, uh, like maybe going out with them and, 
and like doing like uh, uh, homework with them or having them uh, help me in on like uh, 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 in like the uh, school and stuff. And I think it was more than just academic. Yeah. It was more than just schoolwork. You built friendships through yeah. being in that environment and hung out with people. And yeah. Um, so we work with families from all different backgrounds, kind of coming at things from a lot of different angles and um, under lots of different kinds of pressures. Um, what advice do you have for us for families who might be a little bit afraid to be a trailblazer, um, who might be a little bit afraid to be a pioneer and, and kind of paving the way for things as you have done? Uh, they, they just sound... Uh find like conferences so they can find friends to help their families and parents and go to conferences or like read books so or, or like um um or like join groups and to help their like kids and and like uh, parents and 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 like uh like go like talk to like uh, friends in their uh, city and stuff now wasn't your mom inspired by this it, conference a long time ago yeah, uh, the, the yeah. Yeah, uh, she like uh, went to a conference one time at Peak, and then she like heard a person speaker at college, and then she like came home and told uh, some of friends at school about going to like uh, going going to college and stuff. Okay. Actually, I had another story about the question you just asked before that I forgot to throw in. So when Micah was, it, you would invite all your friends to the IEP, right? When yeah. you were younger in school, and so. Uh, the kids would come into this IEP and uh, the teacher, this one instance, so the teacher was complaining that Micah uh, was being problematic in the class because he was looking bored and uninterested <laughs> in the class. And so these other students that were there said, well, wait a minute, uh, it's a boring class. <laughs> it, it, if he looks bored, there's reason for that. And they said, we're all bored. But we are being disingenuous and acting like we're interested. Mike is the honest student in the class because he's acting bored. And it was an instance like that that if the students hadn't been there to offer that perspective, Micah would have been labeled as possibly a problematic bored student in the class when really he was just being honest and in the same position as everybody else. So that opportunity for having those, those folks in the circle of friends involved offered for more to be gained, and for Micah to be in a, an environment, and probably the teacher learned something from that, maybe to be less boring. So, were you still bored in the class after that? Or no. I don't know. No. <laughs> you did all your homework for yeah. it, though, right? Mike always does all of his homework. Um, so, in school, like, I think this was a really good example, um, inviting your friends to IEP meetings. Uh, if you were met with sort of resistance from principals, from teachers, who, who maybe had, a, had trouble recognizing your contributions and your potential at first, um, what were some ways that you helped open their mind and thus opening the door for, for participation? What were some strategies you used to, like, I guess, educate them about you? Uh, I just would like teach them of what I like, uh, what I like wanted and uh, needed in the class and, and like what kind of, uh, what kind of, what kind of uh, stuff I had to get uh, help uh, with like in the school and stuff. And I'd imagine as you, you know, progressed each year and you had more and more sort of momentum that you had really concrete examples of successes to be able to share, right? Did you did you find that that helped them be more at ease, or yeah, that be more willing to take risks and try things that they might not have tried before? Yeah, like like uh, like how 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 like the link program started. My mom like heard it from another school, and she brought it back, and and like that's how we like um, that's how we started like the. Uh, Circle of friends and like the uh, other stuff at my school and stuff. With support of teachers. Yeah. So what was the? Uh, uh, I had a teacher sharing book that uh, helped me uh, 
dream about me going to like uh, college and and she like knew I could go to college and she was a cool teacher. And she took you to a college night yeah. early on, right? Yeah. So she, I think the, the story is that Micah was one of the only folks in, in this, in the classroom uh, that was interested in going off to college and she, she honored that, right? Yeah. She took that seriously. Yeah. And was excited about that. For, you mentioned you took the test with um, the with the class in college. So did you need any accommodations to take the test? Did somebody read it to you? Yeah, or I. Go to a separate room? Uh, like, uh, like, uh, we 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 kind of took the test down the hall, and I had a peer tutor would like uh, read the read like the uh, read like the uh, uh, read like the. Uh, uh, um, like the whole like on uh, um, test and stuff to me. And what was the and um, <clears throat> that one class, the communication class? You were read the test in the film, and you got the what grade in the class? One of the highest. Yeah. Grade? Yeah. yeah. Third highest grade in the class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and some of these tests, they were the same tests that were given to others. I remember that psychology <laughs> exam yeah. that I was reading with you. I, I, I was, it was way over my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a philosopher. Like uh, like like we, we like uh, like uh, like uh, I had a teacher that was that she was like an advisor when through the program that I would go to and she would like help me pick out my like uh, class schedule and 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 like and then uh, and then like uh, and then there's like there was like uh, there were like uh, like groups in the state that would uh, I I like got like services through like groups to like uh, help me find people like help like I would like find a group that uh, like 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 it's like a state group that I found friends to like help me and stuff. Now because Michigan goes to 26 didn't you still have an IEP at the yeah. high school? Yeah. yeah. So this was through the a lot of this was still within the, the transition uh, IEP yeah and that that's different than you know me in Nevada and most of other of us who were cut off at 21 or 22 or 18, as yeah. Montana, yeah. I about today. <laughs> so uh, I, that was, I think that was what what helped that happen was the the age thing. And now and now, uh, but now that you're 25, it's you're, you're ready to graduate. Yeah. Again, so. I was a question from Jeff. Is there anything else that you, I actually have one question more for you, Alex. So when you first um, read the flyer and like learned about Micah and what he was looking for, um, how did, can you just give a little snapshot of that journey? You said that you didn't have much background in, you know, disability before, but that you were really interested in kind of the foundation of the flyer. So as you learned from Micah, as Micah showed you what he needed, like what are some tips that you might pass on to us about how to support ability, how to kind of, you know, learn about someone new and something new that we might be able to pass along? I think the first thing that is, is most important, the most important thing is to be aware that, and I was talking about this in the wonderful presentation by Jennifer, the one of transition, yeah, we were talking about this in that, in that session as well, is I think sometimes we forget that, uh, at least in, in the organizations that I work on, that the, the community isn't just you know, the disability community. And there's so many other folks out there. There's so many other people with different views. Uh, there's so, there's, if you look at the, for instance, Las Vegas has, I think a little over what, 
two million people, almost two million people. So imagine how many different individual ideas people have about different things. And there's so many people doing so many different uh, jobs and having so many different life experiences that a lot of times they don't even think about disability or don't have any exposure to disability. And I think being present to all of these different uh, pockets of different types of people, that that's how uh, this, we get more of a momentum going forward. And I was somebody in that, that outside realm. I didn't know about any of this. And uh, the disability movement, um, or even inclusion. I didn't even know before I met Micah that we had a program on campus that allowed people with intellectual disabilities to attend school. But it was going on on campus. The whole, this was, I was a senior when I uh, met Micah. So the whole four years that I was on campus, I didn't even know about this happening. I think a lot of it is advertising and marketing the skills and the successes of what's going on, not just to us. We were talking about interagency collaboration, and sometimes interagency collaboration feels like just saying hi, to, like a, a reunion. Hi, it's nice to see you again, how are you doing? And, and we're talking to each other, but then where does that go? And we forget that there's a whole world out there that doesn't know that some of this stuff is going on. So marketing to those people and letting those people know exactly what's going on, and the philosophy too, because there's a lot of different approaches to uh, disability. And I think that if the general public knew about a lot of these uh, philosophies, kind of the, the, the crux of the arguments, that the disability movement would even gather more momentum. Because uh, and Micah's dad always says, uh, every generation asks, what does it mean to be human? And I think my generation and the generation before me have been have asked that question, and finally, people with disabilities have fallen under that uh, that that category. I was just uh, whenever I come to these conferences, I like. Has anyone read um, what's that book? It, uh, Mooney, uh, Jonathan Mooney, and the book. Uh, what is that called? The Short Bus. Yeah. Short Yell. Yeah. yeah sure. And I was reading one of the. I, I like to read that before I come to these events because he's so philosophical and he approaches things so wonderfully, and. Uh, he was discussing the idea that, you know, this is that this is the next step. You know, we we people that um, are on the outside of the the, the community, th th this will happen and, and be throughout society. Inclusion will, I, I think, become this is the next step. Is part of the next you know step forward. But part of that is getting that out there and. You know, you can fight against it, but it's going to happen. The evolution is going to happen. But getting that out there and allowing other folks to think about it outside is, is what really got me involved. And I've, uh, when I moved out to Las Vegas, we had, I created a couple of summer associate VISTA positions. And so one of my best friends who I worked with at the school newspaper, who knew Micah as well, came out to work with me in Las Vegas last summer uh, doing video projects for, we were creating video resumes for individuals with disabilities. And he started that and got another job and moved out to Las Vegas and now has been working for one year in the disability community just through the connection. I just got, uh, our friend Devon is the same way. She went out and worked with uh, Inclusion Films in California with uh, John Travolta's uh, brother, I think, making film, editing films for individuals with autism. Another one of my friends, I just got out um, to move out to Las Vegas for this summer to do the same program. So it's people that, that wouldn't I'll come know. next summer. Yeah, you're coming next summer. <laughs> Mike always has an invitation to come for a position. But I think the idea is how do we make this uh, just available to everybody in society and getting those people involved. Because once those people get involved, uh, there's, like I said, once that experience is there, it organically forms. And we realize that there really aren't differences and that we're, we're more alike. And uh, that's the that's the way that a workable society should be. Alex, will you tell um, your relationship with uh, the son of one of the other parent center directors in the country? Okay, yeah, this is, this is hot off the press. Nevada, we, uh, the, Nevada Pet is the name of the parent center out there. Anyone familiar with Karen? Okay, so Karen uh, met me through uh, we were doing networking and she wanted to, my boss 
was going, in Nevada it's different, there's north and south, uh, it, there's Reno and there's Las Vegas, and that's a, and everything else is, is desert. Uh, <laughs> so you have those, uh, and then there's some inclusion in the desert projects, but that's, a, actually somebody came to us and wants us to be more inclusive with, uh, with one of the mountains or something, <laughs> we're, we're working on that. So there is an inclusion in the desert project. But, uh, so Karen started talking to me about different, I was networking with her on a, on a, on a level with some of the possibilities that we could uh, partner up with as a parent organization as being a member of the USED. And uh, her son started coming to some of our People First meetings, which is one of our, our chapters. And I realized that her son was somebody who I really, really got along with and had wonderful talents that would be perfect for improving our People First project and we're doing some of the video work that we're doing this summer. And we had four summer associate vistas that we were hiring. And I offered, I said, you know, Kenny, fill out the application, uh, come in for an interview, see if, if you're interested. He did the interview, he did wonderful. He had a whole list of abilities and that would be uh, perfect for us. And today is his third day uh, as a summer associate vista. And he's going to have that position for 10 weeks. So he gets, um, uh, and also after your suit as a VISTA, you get an education award, you're going to the community college. So today I gave him the assignment, I think, of working on creating a people first mascot. So that's what he's doing. So it's just through those, again, through those experiences. It's not something like that that came together. It wasn't even through a specific <coughs> program. I was initially starting to do customized employment with him through the process of trying to carve a position perfectly, but I said, I'm going to carve, I, I have the ability to carve this position right now. I'm going to do it because it seems like I think this would be a great fit. And through that, uh, that happens. So Micah has taught me all of this because you always talk about community, right? Mm -hmm. And a community that excludes all of its members is not a community at all, the last quote. And that's kind of the basis that I bring into it, which is interesting because my background is in analytic philosophy. And this is, you know, this community kind of uh, more abstract idea of just interaction and experience. It's all about the experiences that we can create being present for people around us that all these great things can happen. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so I, we're nearly out of time, but if anybody has any other comments or questions, we certainly want you to be heard. I just have a quick fun one. Hey, Micah, what was your favorite class or the funnest class, and what was the worst class? Uh, I, I, like, I, like, I didn't have any bad classes. I, I had, uh, I like taking social change class and I like taking class on China and, and learning about China history and, but uh, I, I like, I didn't have any like hard like classes. Well, you can have mine then. <laughs> <laughs> I have some. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, I think we're good. Well, thank you so much, both of you guys, uh, for kind of testing out this new addition to your already wonderful presentation. So uh, thanks for sharing, everybody, and especially for you guys. Mm -hmm.